Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortez. Just a reminder that full-length meetings, special events, and every program we air here on Channel 18 can be seen online. You can find all that at the town's website, town.barnstable.ma.us. This past Sunday was a momentous day at Sandy Neck as the park's nearly 60-year-old bathhouse was burned to the ground. The day-long event had a little something for everybody. The hundreds who showed up to watch the burn were treated to free food, nice weather, and a great view of the building-sized bonfire. The West Barnstable Fire Department used it as a training opportunity, conducting several structure fire drills before managing the final burn. And, of course, the staff of Sandy Neck Beach Park treated it as a spectacular way to signify the final day of a little piece of history at Sandy Neck. Sandy Neck Beach Park manager Nina Coleman hatched the idea for the bathhouse burn months ago. And based on the conversation she had with us, I'd say she's pretty happy with how everything went. Take a look. Well, if you happen to be driving by the area where Sandy Neck is, you may have spotted a uh, giant ball of flames coming from there this past Sunday. And if you were down on Sandy Neck, you were treated to a pretty cool party as the old bathhouse uh, really did go up and then down in flames. And joining us here to talk about how the, how the whole event went is Sandy Neck Beach Park Manager Nina Coleman. Hey, Nina. Good morning, Nick. Now, uh, talk to us just first of all about how it went. I, I unfortunately was only able to see it on video. It looked pretty cool. But, I mean, being there, what was it like? It was a great day, beautiful day, as you know. The wind was out of the southwest, which is perfect for a burn. We kept the, um, the sparks and the smoke away from the spectators and away from the dunes. So that took the whole level of you know, concern sure. for the fire chief and myself way down, um, which made it more enjoyable. For us, um, the fire department did a bunch of training exercises in the morning, which were super interesting to watch. Then a bunch of scenarios where they had the different sections of the um, bathhouse, like they did a garage fire, then they did, you know, fire in the bathroom, and then a fire, uh, um, a kitchen fire. So they had those different ones to set up. They surprised their guys with different scenarios. Cool. Super interesting, and then. They just let it rip, and it was impressive. I'm sure you have footage. Um, that was an old building, a dry building, and at one point it just went up, and it was, it was good to see it go. It, it's it's been there a little too long. It, you know, it's seen better days, and uh, you know, to, to celebrate that was was really enjoyable. Yeah, I think I wanted to to know why you chose to burn it down mm -hmm. because you probably could have just had a backhoe come on in there and just demolish it, right? We could have. Um, and uh, we did choose to burn it for a couple of reasons. First of all, we wanted to celebrate, you know. Sure. There's nothing better than a good burn. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was part of it. Certainly there was a PR aspect to it. Um, also, West Barnstable um, really needs to have an opportunity to, to go in and do scenarios. Um, they don't, you know, they get a fire once a year, po possibly even mm -hmm. that. Um, and so, you know, as the chief said, there's nothing like a live burn to really think you know, you think it's going to take, you know, two minutes to do something, you find out it takes more time. So each of his staff members was able to really go through those scenarios full on. And uh, so we were doing a combination with them, and, and it worked really well. What about the crowd? Uh, what kind of turnout did you get? We had a good turnout. Yeah. yeah um, parking was limited. People had to hike up. Obviously, we were concerned about safety, so we didn't let anybody park up in the parking lot. Um, we had to have the vehicles facing out. Um, so that took a little while, um, but everybody was in a festive mood, um, and uh, people were cycling in and out because the burn was really exciting all day yeah. and into the, into the afternoon. So it, w it afforded a lot of people to come through. We think m maybe upwards of three to four hundred people cycled through there. And that's great. I mean, obviously the uh, burn was competing with uh, Siobhan on the Village Green, so uh, I'm glad that you still had a good turnout for everybody to go off and see that site. And Siobhan and the Patriots, sir. Don't right. Forget that. Exactly. I was I was conflicted. I was torn in many different directions this past Sunday. That is for sure. But I'm glad you guys had a good time out there. Uh, I, somebody else asked me about this, and I wanted to ask uh, you. Considering that the structure is so old, I wonder how much prep work you did beforehand to make sure that there weren't any materials inside the building where you know once they were burned could damage the beach or the ecosystem there right. or whatever. I, what, was that a concern for you to start off with, at least? It was a concern. It was uh, uh, a lot of work. Mm. We had to have multiple permits. We had to um, have a hazardous material um, study done by a professional um, outfit out of Boston. They took multiple samples because who knows when it's that old, as you say, maybe you know the coat of paint on the top is okay, but five coats in, you might have a problem. 
um, you know, the foams they used around piping years ago could have asbestos. Multiple um, tests on everything. Uh, only a sink came back with a little bit of asbestos, and that was just a coating, and that was removed and disposed of correctly. Um, and then, of course, the, the light bulbs, um, the fluorescent light bulbs. And that was it, surprisingly. Um, the building came out clean. So there was uh, DEP, um, extensive DEP um, paperwork and permitting. Um, there was our local demolition permit, which gave all the local um, you know, Board of Health and Conservation an opportunity to review it as well. Um, and so it took a couple of months to pull it together. And I know people were concerned, um, but I can assure you that it was clean to burn. Oh, that's uh, that's good to hear, and I, I figured as much. I mean, with with you overseeing the operation, I would have to imagine that n nothing would be overlooked. Um, now, in terms of what happens now, of course, everything is demolished and burned and destroyed. When do we start seeing movement on construction of the new bathhouse? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, it is right now. People should go check it out. It's just a clean slab. Kind of neat to look at the landscape without it there. Um, the bids for the new uh, contractor are coming in. Um, it's closing on the 26th of October, which is Tuesday of next week. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be reviewing those and awarding the bid, and then it goes right to the contractor. We have uh, been working all fall doing the electrical work um, and this demolition work so that when the contractor comes in, it's just all systems go. So it will be being built all winter. Okay. And uh, it is contracted to be done middle of um, uh, April. So, I know you had said uh, when I talked to you a couple of weeks ago that the goal was to have it open and ready for use by Memorial Day weekend of next year. Oh yeah, that is definitely. And again, that's how it's contracted out. Since it's a general contractor, not the town building it, um, they're required to have it done within that time frame, obviously, or there's penalties. So they have a lot of motivation. To, um, to ensure that that project is, is on time. Now, what's going to be different about the new one as compared to the old one, aside from the fact that the new one isn't going to be 50 years old and kind of busted? Well, the new one is beautiful. Well, am I right about the old one being 50 years old, or is it not, was it not quite It would have been 60 years old. Oh, wow. So I, I even lowballed it a little bit. You so it, yeah. so the, the new one, what's going to be different? Well, it's going to be beautiful first of all and clean and nice and up to date so that is a nice start um, it is we're moving the garage component down to the gatehouse which frees up since we have to stay in the footprint yeah. it frees up space within that footprint like the concession stand area was so small um, and now they're going to have a lot more room a lot more obviously modern area um, where you know we're hoping that'll bring in um, that goes out to bid as well this winter so I think a lot of people will have interest in, in maybe you know, taking that to a different level. Mm. Um, the uh, the restrooms obviously are going to be all up to date. It's going to have a beautiful facade with a cupola with a light um, for for at nighttime as sort of a beacon. Um, and um, outdoor showers, warm. If anybody goes to Sandy Neck, they're going to have a chuckle with that because uh, they're freezing cold right now. So yes, <laughs> warm showers. Um, and then some shaded um, sitting area. So absolutely. So overall, a good Sunday at Sandy Neck. Oh, top top ten for me. And I've been at this job eight years. I mean, you know, the beautiful day. Everybody was happy. Um, we had a number of people donating time and food um, for the celebration. The Polar Cave, which is our, in my opinion, the best ice cream in town. Ooh. On 28, um, over on the Mashpee line, he came in and uh, was giving folks ice cream. Um, Porky's uh, Barbecue was donating their time, um, so people were getting food, they were happy, you know, we were having a lot of ooh ahs and clap, clap, clap when the roof fell in, and so yeah, good day, good day was head by all as far as I can tell. Just one meeting left on this week's calendar. The town council convenes tonight at 7 o'clock in the town hall hearing room. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.